morning, everybody. Welcome to church. If you're watching online, welcome. We're going to have a time of worship and praise. We're going to hear from God, which is so exciting. So if you're outside, come on in. Let's praise God together. Enjoy. Welcome to church, everybody.
God, Emmanuel, by the power of your grace, my hope remains. Where there is darkness, you are the light. Where there is
Where there is fear, your perfect love comes alive. Out in the desert, you bring the rain. When I am weak, you give me strength to stand again. Where there is darkness, you are the light. Where there is fear, your perfect love comes alive. Out in the desert, you bring the rain. When I am weak, you give me strength to stand again. before you today, God, that you might fill us. Lord, fill us with everything that you are. Fill us with your love, with your peace, with your Holy Spirit, God. We lay all our humanness before you. We say, speak to us, God. We are ready to hear from you. God, we are ready to hear from you today, God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy God. We make room for you this morning, God. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts, fill this room, fill the room that every single person watching this might be in. God, your peace. Church, I encourage you to let your heart sing a new song to God today, right now. Whether you sing or not, God hears your heart. He hears the sweetness of the melody that comes out of your soul. As you sing to Him with words, with tongues, with humming, with whatever you want. Sing to the so faithful and so good when we open our hearts and we ask him to come he comes every time it's like ready to ready to fill it ready to go as soon as you say yes god i love that it's never far we just feel far that's that's some not maybe not you but maybe just me <laughs> well welcome to church everybody my name is steph if you haven't met me before i'm searching the room can't see you there online but my name is steph welcome if you're watching online now feel free to say hi in the chat press the button that says chat or hi or hi 
Um, if you're watching later on, you can send us an email, hello at c3rabina.org.au. Why don't you give someone a high five if you're in the room? Give yourself a high five if you're at home by yourself. That's hugging. It's not high fiving. You're allowed, you're married. I'll allow it. <laughs> if it's your first time watching us online, please say hi. Please let us know that you're watching. We just love to connect and um, give you some info on what's going on in our church. So send us that email or, or get on our website. There's some plenty of links there for you. For you, sorry, my teacher voice. Um, I would like for us to pray. Let's just get straight into that Holy Spirit moment. Now, I would like I would like us to pray together in our groups. I think we're going to pray. We are all going to pray for our church as a whole, for our friends to know Jesus. But I also think it's important today to pray for someone who's unwell. I feel like we all know someone who's unwell. So, in your small groups, name them and put them into Jesus' hands. Put them into God's hands. Pray the name of Jesus into their life for some healing. So in your small groups, you can do that. I'll give you a minute or two. I pray with you online. I can't see if anyone's put anything in the chat, but I will do that anyway. Would you like to, Pastor Max? I'm happy to do that. Okay. All right, people online, I want you to um, name the people that you are praying for this morning. Name the people you want to see get well you want to fill with the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you are the healer. You are the healer. You are the ultimate healer. God, yes, you work through medicine. You work through doctors. You work through other people. Lord, but we know that you work through your spirit as well. Lord, we thank you. We lift up every person that the people at home are praying for. God, you know who they are. You hear their voice. Lord, we lift them up to you by name and we thank you that you fill them with your Holy Spirit. The more you fill them, the less sickness there is, God. But your will be done in their lives, God. Let let your Holy Spirit be full in every single person that we know is unwell today, God. Lord, there's, there's COVID, there's the flu, there's all these things going around, but you are bigger than that, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit healing comfort, Lord, in your almighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, Thank you, Lord. Holy God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pray for my friend Kate. Lord, may she be healed in the name of Jesus. May she be lifted up into your hands and healed in your almighty name. And she can be returning to be full and seeking you all the days, all the fullness of God in her life right now. wrapping up if you're still going. God, we lift this place up to you in your almighty name. Jesus, we thank you for the plans that you have made for this house. God, that you know, you know what you have plans for this house. Lord, we thank you that you will bless them because what you have started, you will finish. You will bring to fruition, God. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing. 
We thank you that you protect the leaders of this house. Lord, protect the leaders of C3. Lord, we're lifting up to you all of the leaders um, in, in Christian churches around, the, around the Australia and around the world. Lord, we know that we sit in a place that's a little sticky right now in the the culture's viewpoint, Lord, but you are bigger, you are stronger, and we speak your name into everything that we do. God, we know that your name stands firm, your word does not return void, and what you have promised, you will bring to fruition. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray blessing and prosperity and protection and, and power on the leaders of this house right now, God, in your almighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Don't you love that? Yes. All right. We are going to, I'm going to share some updates before we get excited about Pastor Don's going to bring our offering word and Pastor Max is going to bring our our message. Thank you. I've lost the word. I'm so excited. All right, kids, if you are here, you may... Run along to Kids Church, have a great time. You are going to learn heaps and have a great, fun connection. Have a great time. Let's give them a hand as they go. Snaps. As we said, we got some updates for you, church. Now, I don't know about you, but I love coming to church. And I encourage you, you need to be in church during August. You need to come to church all the time in August. <laughs> and then thereafter, but why not? There's some exciting things happening. We are going to gather together as a church on the 9th and the 16th of August. On, that's on a Tuesday night, is that right? Thank you. Tuesday nights, we're gonna get together and pray and worship together as a, as a whole team. And we're gonna, we're gonna dive in, we're gonna lift God up and we're going to speak his name into this place. So that's on the 9th, Tuesday the 9th, and then a week later on Tuesday the 16th, that, um, so if you have connect group on one of those weeks, make that your connect group night. Come along, bring your group, pray together. There's so much power in praying together as we have just experienced. So please come. We're going to pray as a whole family twice. That's pretty great. So that's the 9th and the 16th. So be there or be square. What time? Details to be confirmed. Is that right? 7.30, the boss says. Just checking my... Jiggity. Doesn't say. It might say on the calendar, but I'm not looking at the calendar. Josh says 7.30. So if you're not, if we get you sending emails? Yeah, we'll be sending emails. So if you're not getting those emails, check your junk folder and unjunk it and make sure we have your right details on Elvanto or send someone an email or a text and let us know because we will change it for you. All righty. So um, is that all? I forgot. Sorry about that. Okay, we're going to introduce the amazingly refreshed and tanned (laughs) Pastor Don. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hey, it's good to be here in God's house. I love this series. We're about hearing from God. You know, the most significant times in my life when I heard from God was in times of worship, times when hands were lifted and in and, and honor of Jesus and, and just had the voice of the Holy Spirit just drop into my spirit. So, so being here in God's house and, and this opportunity to share online, this opportunity to hear from God and, and it could change the course of your direction in your life as to what God has for you. You can step towards it when you hear from Him and to know what next step to take. The, the scripture I want to share with you this morning is, is this 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 11. This, this is an outcome of sowing seeds. And it's a read 2 Corinthians in chapter 9. It's a great scripture about giving. It flows on from chapter 8. Um, Paul, Paul addresses generosity and giving. And, and he says here, Yes, you will be enriched in every way so you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. These two things will result from this ministry of giving. Firstly, the needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, in terms of God's house will be met. And secondly, they will joyfully express their thanks to God. So the question is, 
is today to think about what are you doing with your wealth? What, what, what are you doing with what God has given to you? To be generous on all occasions. You know, we, we just, uh, as Steph mentioned, we just spent a couple of weeks um, uh, on holidays in Bali. And uh, apart from the most significant thing is having time with Adrian and just being able to relax and enjoy the time together. A couple of, couple of highlights. One, one was we're sitting in a cafe, as we just tend to do morning, lunch and evening, because it's just so wonderful to do and so easy to do there uh, in terms of the economy. We're sitting in a cafe having breakfast and, and there's cafes on the beach and, and there's people walking up and down and there's this little shrine there and people, are, people come along and they're, and they're op- making the offerings as they do. And every, every, house, every house has a shrine, every, every place of employment has a shrine. And we're, we're just sitting there and they're, and they're offering, the, offering their, their gifts and, and the squirrels are coming down and thinking they're the gods and taking, and taking, the, taking the grain. And <laughs> I think the gods are little squirrels. But it, 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 we're sitting there and, and, and we just started feeling the presence of God and go, oh, what's that? And, and the table next to us, there were three ladies having, having a connect group. And they, and they were um, taking it turns to bring a scripture, read from the scripture, and then they'd pray into that scripture that they were sharing something that God had spoken to them about. One was talking about Noah and about salvation of their household and was praying, well, let's pray for the, our household. And, and, and we were just sitting on the next table and just felt the presence of God just flow onto, onto our table as, as we were there. And, the, and this culture that, that is, so, is so bound up in, the, in this worship of gods that are not gods, there was people just worshiping Jesus and cel- and celebrating His presence in this in this nation, and you know, God is not finished with the nations of this earth. A week before we were up in um, in a place called Chandidasa, it's a little more remote than Sanur, and and um, and we were chatting with some of the locals as to how you're going with um, what's been happening with COVID for you and. And uh, Made, whom we'd met before, um, it's, was telling us about about how how tough it's been, and and for two and a half years had no work. I said, "So what did you do? How did you live?" And he said, "Well, well I made bamboo skewers. Uh, that's what I did." And and I said, "So how many did you make in an hour?" And just, mine goes mathematically, and he told me the number of about one and a half. 150, and, and, I, and, I, and I said, you made them from bamboo, yes, and that would have been difficult, cutting them with a knife, and just by hand, and I said, so how much did you earn for that? And he, and he gave me the number, and it's, uh, it equates to 50 cents for an hour, and that, that's how he fed his family. And, so, and, he, and he said, and he said that my two boys, they can't go to school. We just can't, because they only just started work again after two and a half years and, and employment in the, in the, in the cafe. And he was telling me with tears in his eyes and just the pain in his heart when he said, I, my little boy's crying because he can't go to school. And, I, and we was going, what can we do? And we, we gave them a little tip at $30, but 300000 and <laughs> just say thank you, uh, bless you. And, and, uh, and, and he sent me a photo the next day. Was, here's photo number one. Um, and, and, and here he is with his family. I, I said, there's some money to help you get your kids to school. And, and he said, oh, we bought two bags of rice. They bought 15 kilos of rice. Um, ten, the other one off to school and going ah oh, that's pretty cool just to be able to help this little family but being able to be generous on all occasions and you know the thing that really stirs my heart is 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 that my day said 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 thank you god and, and he's text to me you know it's like the scripture says 
and, and, he, and he talked about, may you always be blessed and, 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 and the incredible gratitude. And I, I said, our, our friends back home were praying for you that, that your family would be blessed and that you would know Jesus Christ because cause he's the one we talk to to help us in these times. And, and it was great to be able to just share with him. But you know, the thing, well, it's nice to be able to be generous on all occasions, the thing that really stirs my heart is, is being able to bring my tithes to God because I say, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for who you are and thank you for the relationship I have with you and the relationship I have with your people. And God, and God the thing that, that, that I really want is, is for another generation to know you. And, and, and so, so that's, that's the why. I give large amounts, not just small amounts like we were doing just to our people we know in Bali, but to be able to go, God, here, we want your house to be established so that people can know you. That's, that's the why. That's the why. So, so that our generosity will result in thanksgiving overflowing to God. God, thank you. Thank you, Father. Father, this morning I want to pray for Marta and his family that they would indeed know Jesus Christ and his saving grace, that have come into an incredible relationship with you, Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus to him and his whole family, to his wife and his daughter and the two sons. And God, I pray that across the nation of um, Indonesia, that there will be a mighty move of your Holy Spirit like we have never seen, that the name of Jesus will be lifted high, there will be a flood of people into your house in, in Indonesia, God, that miracles will occur, that mighty miracles will attest to the saving power of Jesus Christ, God, God, oh God, we thank you, and Father, in this land, in this community, in this place, wherever we are right now, God, I pray your Holy Spirit would flood the streets and bring salvation to our cities and to this earth. Father, we bring our family members to you that don't know you, and we say, Jesus, reveal yourself through the Holy Spirit to them. Let them see Jesus. God, God, today we're asking you, move in this land, in this nation, in this earth, the salvation of Jesus Christ. God, let your kingdom come. <laughs> let your will be done in the name of Jesus. So thank you for joining with us and uh, being part of this. If you're not being part of the Vision Builders, click on that and um, jump in. Father, bless every gift, every giver, every financial circumstance. Father, I thank you that in this time when, when interest rates rise, God, I thank you that, that uh, let faith rise in people's hearts as they trust in you. God, God, you're our source. You're our supply. We look to you. We look to you. We look to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So just after this next song, we'll be proclaiming every victory is yours. That's right, isn't it? Every victory is yours, yes. Pastor Max is going to come. The Max, soon to be the master of counselling. Congratulations, Max. You're one assignment away from finishing this. What a mammoth, what a mammoth thing to undertake. And we're so, so proud of you and, and know that God has put a word in your heart for us today. So get ready and open your ears to hear what, uh, what Max has got. And let every victory be proclaimed in your world, in your circumstances, your household, that healing flow into every home where there's healing is needed and the blessings of heaven come, come upon us in today. Thank you. Amen.
Christ on each side We will not lose sight Of the one who's greater One name, one name Holds every victory One voice that silences the enemy One king who reigns for all eternity Jesus, Jesus oh.
now we're starting, or finishing, sorry, series on hearing the voice of God. said, Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the, smash, <clears throat> the message this morning has sort of come out of our interaction with a new Christian. And he was saying to me, you know, I've, I've said the prayer, I've said Jesus is Lord, but I feel nothing. I hear nothing. And it <clears throat> might be, it might be that you're in that sort of a season now, or it might be that you're just leaving that sort of a season or coming into a season of not feeling, not hearing from God. And so this morning I want to have a look at that, the dynamics that, that are in play that most of us don't even, are not even conscious of. But when you become aware of it, then you have knowledge and then you have power. So that's where we want to go today, Genesis 1 and Genesis 3. So, for those who are online, I just want to say, guys, I'm really proud of you. I'm the online pastor. <laughs> so, I have an agenda. I just want to encourage you guys, wherever you are, you can feel the presence of God with you right now. You can hear his word in your ear right now. Nothing separates you from the presence of God. And we've got encouraging words coming from people who are listening. People have been healed. People have heard. People have been encouraged. And people are thankful that we have an online capacity. And so... I want to make a special thank you to the guys in the IT desk. Yes. You guys rock when the volume goes and the picture goes. <laughs> their dedication is there in the background, getting it up and running again. You know, when we went a um, long time ago now, when we went to Bible college, there was um, one of the ways of interpreting the word of God was to go to what they call first mention. So if you want to understand the dynamics of a thing, go in the Bible and find out where it's first mentioned and look at the dynamics there because they're more than likely going to be consistent through the whole Bible and even in our lives. So I want us to go to the first interaction that we've got recorded between man and God. And have a look at the dynamics there. So first of all, I just want to go to Genesis 1, verse 2, just to set the context. It says, The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now we've got some negative imagery there 
and it's quite dramatic, like deep. It's got a sense of it's overwhelming. Got a sense that it's absolute. It's uh, the thing is so deep it's intractable. You can't challenge it. Darkness brings in imageries of distress, dread, terror, obscurity, and the word thick, which just sort of impacts my heart when you read that. Thick. The other words are void, which is talking about ruin and empty, and formless, which is just confusion and futile. And so this was what God's got to work with. And then it introduces the Spirit of God that's hovering over these negative, terrible, uncontrollable dynamics. And this Spirit of God is the Hebrew word, it's, it's ruach. Now, I can't pronounce it right. I don't have the tongue for the KH, <clears throat> which is very guttural. But it's ruach, and it's, it's the Spirit of God, and it's hovering. And the context of hovering is, is one of being relaxed and floating. It's got a sense of cherishness in this Ruach, the Spirit of God. And it's this gentleness, it's this cherishedness, it's this Spirit of God that hovers over the deep and the dark and the void that creation starts to come. And you know, in Genesis 2, you got, and then God said. And you got creation of the day and the night, the earth and the creatures. In, Gen in Genesis 3, sorry, in Genesis 2, we have the introduction of the serpent and the eating of the forbidden fruit. And now in Genesis 3, we have this introduction starting between God and man. And this is the sort of context that you and I operate in. And so in Genesis 3 in verse 8, there's this, then the man and his wife heard the sound of God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But, and I love this but, because God <clears throat> is aware of everything that's happening and he's always proactive. He calls out to Adam and Eve with where are you? This is the voice of God calling, where are you? Now, when you look at this verse and just translate it literally from the Hebrew straight to the English, I just want to read that for you because I find it's quite insightful. It says, on the day, in the breeze, in the garden, walking, God of Yahweh, the sound, and they heard. And this word, in the breeze, is ruach. It's the presence of God, hovering, relaxed, and cherished, moving through the garden, and they heard. They heard God move. But what was their reaction this time to the presence of this gentle, creative spirit of God moving in the garden? They hid. They concealed themselves. They moved. Not only did they separate, Adam and Eve separate, but they were now separate from God. They were concealed. And God continues and engages with them. And he says, where are you? And then Adam replies and he said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. God replies in verse 11 and said, who told you 
we were naked. First of all, God says, where are you? That starts the conversation. And then God comes back and says, who told you? And uh, Adam and Eve's both response to this is to blame shift, as you'll see. I mean, we've got a very technical term for it, and it's called rationalisation, which is trying to fabricate a really good reason for really bad behaviour. <coughs> and we're, ta we're expert at it. Um, Eve was no better. Um, she said the snake made me do it. So she's projecting her unacceptable behaviour onto somebody else. And, you know, when you do that, it does make you feel a little bit better, but it doesn't solve the problem. <clears throat> so this dynamic of God engaging and wanting to communicate with us and us hiding is where I want to dig. This is where I feel like God wants us to dig and find out what is the dynamic here, become aware of it so that once you're aware of it, you think, oh, I know, I've been here before. So the first dynamic here is one of power. You know, in Genesis 1, God said, let's create man in our image so here we have an image you know when when the enemy said you know if you eat the tree of the good of knowledge you'll be like god well that was a lie because they were already there they were already created in the image of god they were clothed in power they worked with god in the garden in the creation aspect and suddenly power has shifted. And Adam and Eve are both aware that power has gone out of their life. And once power goes, our weaknesses get revealed and we just can't get our vision away from the weaknesses that we have. You know, most of the, the hurt in this world is because of lack of power it might be legal power where a husband is trying to get access to his children and he can't because of legal requirements it might be economic power you know in the same scenario a wife in a battered situation can't live because the husband holds the finance there's all sorts of imbalances of power it can be even physical or health i mean today is four years Four years ago, what's the time? It's up us 10. I would be three hours in an operation that I wouldn't be conscious from until two o'clock the following morning. That was open heart surgery. So I know what it's like to lose power <clears throat> and have all your um, weaknesses just parading in front of you simply because you've lost power. And there was the other thing is when you lose power, it's perceived as a threat. This threat comes up with anxiety and anger. And you can see it with Adam and Eve, the anxiety and the anger. I mean, Adam is blaming God because God created Eve. <coughs> Eve is blaming the snake because God obviously created the snake. So there's a little bit, of, there's, there's quite a bit of anger there. There's quite a bit of uh, anxiety there. And there's also quite a bit of disgust. Because you can see them as they really are. And there's this element of disgust creeps over. Yeah, you know, I'm naked, I'm embarrassed. This is, this is uncomfortable. And what's our reaction to when you lose power? You see a threat, you see your own weaknesses, you want to run and hide. It's a normal reaction. We want to hide. We want to get to a place where it's safe. 
And the whole thing just wraps around our identity. I mean, Adam never said, I feel naked. He said, I am naked. It had got in his identity. It got in his mindset. And this is this dynamic happens every time we shift away ever so slightly from what God wants us to do or be or live. We might be doing it consciously or unconsciously, but the sooner as more we shift from God's precepts, the more we open up ourselves to this dynamic that just floods into our life. And the thing that alarmed me most was that Adam and Eve hid themselves. God didn't make them hide. The enemy didn't, the serpent didn't make them hide. They hid themselves. They put themselves into self-exile. They ran and hid away. So I find that when we come to God and we want to hear from God and God wants to talk to us, we've got this dynamic inside of us of yearning to hear from God but running away from God, having good rational and projectional excuses of why we can't spend time with God. And I see this in, in Romans 7, you know, the good that I want to do, I can't, this, this whole dynamic and I feel like this is part of what's happening with us when it comes to spending time with God, hearing what he wants to say to us. But, and there is a big but, because I love Romans 8. To me, it's the whole chapter is, I mean, I love scripture, honestly, obviously, but to me, Romans 8 is just up there. Romans 8 says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God. Now, we've gone from Greek, from Hebrew to Greek, but it's still the same rock. It's still the same Spirit of God, relaxed and hovering, wanting to create after, out of our own voids, our self-imposed depths and thicknesses that we endure. endure. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves. See, we have the power dynamic starting to be moved back. We start, when we move into God's presence, power, authority comes back into our life. That's why Paul talks about the, the, the fruit of self-control. Power and ability come back into our life so that they do not live in fear again. So when power is restored, fear goes. The fear reaction dis dissipates. And then it goes on, and we cry out, Abba, Father. So the term is an endearing term of the fatherhood of God. So now we're not hiding, but we're coming out of the shadows and we're starting this conversation and when you read down in verse 16, it says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So when our spirit and God's spirit starts to touch, this creative dynamic, restorative power starts to flow in our lives. We start to hear and relax the gentle voice of God. And it says, <clears throat> so that we become heirs and co-heirs with Christ. So God's made us in his image. And his image starts to, is always here, but it starts to come forth when we start to hear what he has to say. You know, God is still speaking even now today God is still creating he still wants to speak into your life and says let there be that creative releasing dynamic that restores power dynamic back into your life 
So where are you? God's still asking that question. Where are you? And, and this other great question of who told you? You know, as a counsellor, we, we, I sit with people and they say, you know, I can't do it. And very gently I said, who told you you can't do it? What authority? You know, this is where God's saying to Adam, what authority told you you were naked? Who told you to hide? Where did all this information come from? And this is why I love so much about spending time in God's presence because he very gently comes across and says, who told you? You know, I'm, as Pastor Don has said, I've got two weeks to go and I've finished. There was a lot of conversations there between us, between me and God. I'm too old. I'm not as quick picking up all this information. How am I going to get a job? I'm competing against young people. And God keeps coming back and says, Max, who told you? Who told you? But it's so gentle. So <clears throat> I want to close by reading a short passage from a book called I Hear His Whisper. It's by Brian Simmons. He did the Passion Translation. And it says, There is a well of life that springs from my presence. No other love can delight your soul. No other sound will move your heart. Come and be prepared in my fullness. All that is broken, I will heal. For I am the God of mercy and I sit upon a throne of grace. You have only discovered a portion of my forgiveness and love. There is still much to learn as I take you deeper into my ways. As you come into my light, you will see even more of my love. I am the God who heals, the Father of endless mercies. As you step behind the veil, you will find me. I will not hide myself from you. I am always available. Come in faith and set aside distractions. The closer you come to me, the more my glory dispels the darkness. You don't need to live in the shadows of obscurity when I invite you into the light. My love will pierce every mindset with unavoidable truth. Focus on me, beloved, and you will experience my tangible presence. So, as we finish off today, For those in the room and for those online, I want you to reach out for God. Start the process. Close your eyes. Jesus has promised that he will never leave you and never forsake you. So as you close your eyes, where is Jesus? Can you see Jesus?
What is the expression on his face? Can I guide you? If you see Jesus and his back is towards you, if you see Jesus and he's a long way away from you, God is saying, who said that was true? If you're in that area, I want to encourage you to see that Jesus is turning around and he's walking towards you with a big smile on his face. And his arms wide, wide open. May you experience the Ruach of God. May you experience the cherishedness, the gentleness, the grace, and the creative spirit as you interact with God. What is he saying to you? You know, sometimes actions speak much louder than words. But one thing I do know, that if you engage with God, you'll come out of hiding. And you'll walk in power, free from threat. so that you can engage with your life and say, like the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me pray that you'll feel the strength of God flowing into your body now. You'll find that power balance coming back into your life. And if you haven't experienced it at all in your life and you want to, come and see the pastoral team. Come and see me. If you're online, drop us an email. We've got Zoom. We can touch base. We can talk. Just like Steph said at the start, it's hello at c3rubina.org.au. Amen, everybody. Bless you. I pray that you have felt something precious today. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Pastor Max. Thank you. As Pastor Max was praying, I, um, I got a picture that You know, um, I'm not sure where you're watching from that's not the Gold Coast, but here on the Gold Coast at Majabar, when it's winter time but it's sunny, it's quite cool in the shade, right? A little bit windy, especially in the morning. And you step outside into the sun and you just feel the, that warm, that warm winter sun. That's what I, that's the picture that I got when Max asked, where is God? And it's like God's face is the sun and he was shining on, me, but not just me, we were all there, our whole church. God is like so much better, but that picture is just like a shadow of that winter sun warmth that we feel to live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So thank you, Pastor Max. Thanks again. I This week I'm challenged to put myself in a position to fill myself with the, God's word and his spirit, to, the, to be able to hear from him louder than all the other things because that's what God told me. Awesome. Well, church, be blessed as you connect in the cafe, as you connect with each other online or however we do it these days, all, of, all the different ways. May God smile upon you and shine his face towards you and you feel his warmth and you hear his word, you hear his voice. Amen. Thank you for joining us online. Please feel free to say hi in the chat again or send us the email. Thank you for joining us.